Good day. So today we're going to look at sanitizing the uh, water system on a Road Trek Popular 190. This is a 2004 model. Some of the other models may be a bit different. Not all of them have an interior water tank. So if yours does not have that, that's okay. You just, you're just going to save a bit of time as a result. So this job will probably take uh, four to five hours to do. You need to let the sanitizing take place for about three hours according to the manual. And you need to have a copy of the manual. I'll provide links in the description to get a copy specific to your vehicle. And you need to take responsibility for your work on this. I'm going to show you everything that I know on how to do it. But it is a potable water system. So if you make a mistake, you could make yourself ill or kill you or someone you know. So it's important to understand this before you start. So I guess we'll take a quick look at what we're going to need. So one thing is, it's kind of hard to get to the uh, water fill. It's just on the end of these vice grips, so you wouldn't want to have to connect that too often. So just uh, pick up a Gardena filler. Then I have a, a hose here. This is not meant for potable water, but uh, you're never going to find a 100 foot garden hose that is meant for potable water. So you need that for filling it up. You can fill it up through the uh, tank fillers as well. But I'm going to try filling through the city connection and seeing how that works because that will be a little bit more complete. You're going to need uh, bleach. They want you to put in a, a quarter of a cup per 60 liters of capacity. So uh, on my van I think the front tank is about 90 liters. I haven't figured out how big the back tank is but again you need to check your manual for this because it's uh, one of the key parts of the whole thing is getting the correct amount of uh, chlorine in there. So if you winterize the vehicle like you should have, you're going to have to drain the winterizing fluid out so you'll reach in here. And as you can see the tank goes below the bottom of this valve. So you're going to have a fair amount of uh, winterizing fluid stuck in that tank. So we're going to overflow these tanks for a while to try to get that out because if you don't it just it makes the water foamy. We never drink the water in the van but we do want to get it clean at the beginning of the year because you do brush your teeth with that water sometimes depending on what's available. And then if you have the rear tank you'll have uh, another filler here and the overflow is down in the uh, back of the van here. So you might notice it overflowing as you're going through this. While your hands are still clean, you need to make access inside of the vehicle. The indoor tank is right here, and then the rest of the water components are over there. We'll take a look at the uh, hot water tank. One of the things that you need to do here, if you're going to use a hot water tank, is check the uh, blow-off valve, and I'm sure I've shown this a couple times in my videos now, but this overflow valve doesn't work, it's seized. So it's important that that works because you can close the uh, valves on this tank, and then uh, if this isn't working, you could blow up your tank inside of the vehicle. So that is not good. You could definitely hurt somebody doing that. So. Uh, You'd also take a look and see if this uh, anode is in here or not. That needs to be in. Some people take it out. Now let's take a look inside the vehicle, get a closer look. Hopefully there's enough light in here. So that's the uh, indoor tank for uh, if you're going skiing. I think it's good to minus 10 degrees or something, they say. Bit of insulation behind it. You can see the uh, different levels. The drain for the tank is that valve down there. So it's just being permanently set to drain. So I'm going to close that so we can... Uh... Actually, no, we'll leave it open while we're flushing it out. Then there's the hot water tank here. So these valves are always closed because we don't use the hot water. So that's important that you uh, 
make sure that blow off valve is working. To turn on the hot water tank, there's a switch over here. So just to get a bit more access, you have an inverter mounted to this door. There's a few things happening. So there's a valve here so that you can switch between indoor and outdoor water. Your vehicle may or may not have that. When it's like this, it's set to indoor water. That may be out of focus. It's because there's so much stuff in the here for the camera to focus on. It always picks the wrong thing. It has too many focal points. But anyway, so that would bring the water from across the aisle over and feed it into the lines here. So with these valves closed, you open this uh, bypass valve so you can get water through your hot faucet. There's a pump here. There's a valve down there for turning off the outdoor water. I think that's the cold valve down there. You check your manual for that. This is the hot valve here. Goes to the outdoor faucet for the outdoor shower, as they call it. So, uh, I'm gonna open these up now. That's interesting. It's building pressure from the heat. So those are open because I want water to flow pretty much everywhere at this point while we're sanitizing things. We're gonna be uh, running the sink in hot and cold. And the shower, I'm gonna run that. Not that it needs to be super sanitized, but might as well be complete. And then we know everything works before we go. And the uh, toilet's there, so we'll run some water through it. We're not gonna drain the uh, gray and black water tanks after this. They've got antifreeze in them, and they'll be fine for uh, the time being. So you can go to test, see how you are for levels. So right now you can see that I'm empty on all levels when we're done the holding tanks, fresh water tanks. Well, I wonder how the, uh, it figures out which uh, fresh water tank levels are working. I wonder if those are even wired to anything. Because there's no switch to say whether you're on indoor or outdoor water. Anyway, that's another thing to figure out another day. There's a little storage cubby here. Oh, wires seem to be going somewhere. Alright, so I'm going to get the water hooked up outside and we'll uh, start filling the tanks. Okay, so I've got the water hooked up to the CD connection. You'll need some vice grips so you can hold this piece up here while you turn that on by hand. Like I said, you need a good a new O-ring. So it's not really feasible to be taking stuff on and off out of here manually very often. So that's why I use the metal Gardena connector. And I don't know if they make a cap or not. But it would be good to put a cap over that connector as well. And as soon as you do that, your water is going to start working all throughout the vehicle. So it's pressurized. So uh, when we're running the uh, bleach through the van, we'll have to disconnect this. Otherwise, you'll be fooling yourself as to where the water is coming from. So now this valve here needs to be closed most of the time. This is your fill valve. Even though it's yellow, don't be fooled. It's not natural gas. You can see it's hooked up to the... Uh, water line. So just turn it on slow. You'll see the uh, water is pouring out of the front tank now. I'm just going to leave that drain open because like I said there's a bunch of the uh, winterizing fluid inside so uh, you're not going to flood your vehicle doing this. You obviously need to make sure that your uh, faucets are all off inside. So we'll just leave this run for I don't know how long, quite a while, just to pump out that sanitizing fluid. Then we'll go inside and right now just run the other devices. Again, the purpose here is just to get rid of the winterizing fluid that's in everything. 
you'll find that it's kind of foamy. And I, as you see, I have the uh, pump turned off right now. If you have the pump turned on with the city water on, it'll actually run. And it's contributing to the foam. So it's sort of boosting the uh, water pressure. It does not need to be on right now. So you see with the hot water tank bypassed, I have hot and cold that are still coming out, even though it's only coming from the uh, cold water source. So that's looking pretty good. Grab a hold of this thing. Shower. Looks like I need to take it apart and clean it with the screener. So I can feel cold water going through the tube across my skin, so I know that that's fairly uh, good. So that was cold, now I'm just going to flip over the hot. And again, it works both ways. It's not all foamy, so that's pretty good. And then just turn off the faucet. Here. Water doesn't smell too pleasant. That's why you need to sanitize it. See if there's any surprises in here. I haven't looked in here in a while. It's not bad. All right, see, so this pulls to the first lever if you want to fill the bowl. I noticed that the fluid I used this year changed color. It kind of went clear over winter. I never had that before. So you fill the bowl by pulling it part way, then pull the plunger. So sometimes the first time of the year, the uh, flapper gets stuck and then you have to poke at it with a stick to get it to go down. So it's better to do that before you use a toilet. So that's good there. If I wanted to start filling the other tank here, we would just flip over to here. If you can hear that or not. Water's going in here and the drain is open. I better turn this off before I fill up my tank. The gray water tank. So you can fill from the city water connection uh, inside and outside if you wanted some extra water, but you might be coming into some weight problems if you had both tanks filled up. You might run out of uh, sewer capacity as well. So I'm just going to continue on with the uh, front tank for now because that's the main tank. So, uh, we'll let this go on for a while until I'm happy with the quality of the water coming out of the tanks. Then I'll close the drains and overflow them and uh, put some bleach in them. All right, so I just closed the uh, drain there, a bit of water getting on the ground now. And uh, as soon as I did that, I could start hearing the water going into the tank, which is the plan. So you'll know this tank is full when it starts to overflow. The water will start just leaking outside underneath of the van, so it's not a big deal. All right, so I guess it does leak inside the van. I'm filling up the uh, door right now. So that's kind of funny. We'll turn that off. So that's just filling up the uh, speaker right now. Need your speaker water. I guess when you fill it up that fast, the uh, drain does not work quite as intended. So, oh well. So now we know that tank is full. We will uh, drain it. Because we need to make sure we get all the bleach in there that we're supposed to. That can be a fairly time-consuming process to drain that. So I'm going to flip the water over to the other side. There's lots of running around, but once you get the bleach in the system and it's sanitizing, you can go and get the vehicle ready for uh, 
some are doing various other tasks. So got that valve there. I'm gonna fill up this tank. I don't think it's ever had water in it. Like literally since the van was built. So I know on the older road checks it took like a forever to drain. So this one drains pretty good. So we'll turn the uh, city water back on. Now we're filling the other tank. So this one will shoot out the back, I guess. Yeah, there's a little hole. I don't know if you can see it or not. Drilled in there, so that's what uh, was overflowing. It's kind of funny because in the manual it says something else is going to happen. I guess if the door was closed, water wouldn't come inside. No, it just run down your door jam. And you see the water coming out down there. Anyway, let's let this uh, fill up for a while yet. All right, so we got the water coming out the back now. As it was just about getting to the top there, you could hear it, the air coming through. So that's a bit of a warning, just so you know what's happening. You can see that the, the drain is working down here. I think the drain was actually plugged because it did not start to flow until the tank was overfilled and built pressure. But like I said, it hadn't been used in ages. So if you see a little hex tubing hanging over the back of the van, that's what that's for. So that's good, we'll turn off the water and let that drain. And I noticed in the hot water tank, there's a second uh, switch in there. I don't know if you can see it or not. Just underneath that regulator, there's an on off switch right where my finger is at. So if your indoor switch isn't working, it could be that it's turned off over here. So we'll turn that off. Now the city water is uh, still working with the van for the uh, faucets and whatnot, but not filling up any tanks. So we'll drain the two tanks and uh, pour in the bleach through the top fill holes and then we'll fill up the tanks again using this. Then we gotta disconnect. So we'll do that uh, once things are drained. Okay, so I provided a bit of misinformation about the uh, drain for the uh, inside tank. So the inside valve that's down in there actually doesn't drain through the back. The overflow does come out here. If you look in here there's two tubes. There's uh, this is the overflow and that's the fill. They're both clear. You can see what's going on with them. So uh, when you open that valve it actually allows you to dump the inside tank into the outside tank. So if you had that valve closed here, you would be uh, turning, bringing the uh, inside water to the outside tank underneath the driver's seat. And when you have this valve open, then you're draining both tanks. So that's how that works. So sorry for that. I think if you, if you watch the entire video, you'll be able to figure out what's going on. So I was kind of confused how to drain the inside tank because there's not really any water coming out the back. And uh, for whatever reason, the overflows seem to work a lot better when you're just filling with a garden hose in through the uh, fill holes. But when you're filling with the city water, which I'd not done before, it'll actually, uh, it'll overwhelm the uh, overflows and come out the uh, fillers as you saw there. So it's gonna be a while for me to drain these tanks. And once those are drained, then we will uh, I guess I get onto the sanitizing part. All right, so we're ready to put some bleach into the system now. This is probably the more tricky part, so make sure you're not wearing your best clothing when you do it, because you'll probably get bleach on you. Have lots of water available so you can rinse yourself off when the inevitable happens. So I'm just using a water bottle. You wouldn't put bleach directly in the top of the water bottle and try to pour it in, because then somebody might drink it. So what I did was I cut a hole into it, and I'm just gonna pour bleach in. They say to make a one gallon mixture. I'm just gonna kinda estimate how much is going in. And you can see it's running down the side of the vehicle as well. You have to get all that off or it's going to uh, create some rust issues. Probably best to wear gloves doing this. 
So we'll take that tank. We're going to fill it up with water now. So I'm just going to rinse off my skin first. Rinse off the inside of the vehicle. So this is a three hour process for each tank. So we'll just uh, fill it up like this. So the water will back up and kind of, you'll know when you're full. So just fill it up until it starts to overflow. Then we'll go up to the other tank and do the same. And then we're gonna start running the uh, mixture of water and bleach through the uh, pipes in the vehicle. These are handy because if you can just turn it off by disconnecting. So I'm going to go over and do the front one here for you and then we'll uh, do the waiting game. Alright, so I'm going to fill this one up now. So this the water is all going to get dumped here. It's not going to be water that you use while you're camping. Just rinse the bleach off anywhere that it might have gotten. You'll fill up the tank. So I'm just going to fill up the tanks off screen here and then uh, we'll start running the water. Okay, so I got both tanks filled up. So now at this point, we're going to have to turn on the water pump. So go over here. So it's a uh, charge of pressure. Right now I have the transfer slash drain line open because I want that pipe from here to the front of the van to uh, get chlorine mixture in it. I am set up so that I am using the inside tank right now. If you have an intent to use your hot water tank, you would uh, open these valves going onto the tank so that they're in line, and you would close the uh, bypass, bypass valve by having it going crossways. But I'm not going to be using it, so I'm missing that step. The uh, valves to the outside faucets are open. So at this point, I'm just going to run uh, this. And you'll smell bleach coming out. And here's how quiet that pump is. It's a pretty nice one. I think it's a flow serve, possibly. The flow jet. Can't smell any bleach yet. It has to go through the tubing across the floor, over here, up to the faucet. It's pretty good hint of the bleach yet now. So as you can see, there's a lot of running around to do this process, it's time consuming. So when you're convinced that you've had enough water go through here, then you switch to the hot and do the same. I 
good sign here is there's not a lot of bubbles going through. So flushing the tanks at the beginning of this job helped a lot. Because uh, I've had it where it's, I've had bubbles in the water all summer from the uh, antifreeze mixture. So not typically never did do the uh, sanitizing process with the vehicles. So again, this water might have a bit more bleach in it than you would normally get out of the tap. So you try not to get it on anything. So you smell the water, we got bleach coming out here. And then to be complete, we need to do over here as well. You wouldn't drink out of this, but it is tied into your water going through the vehicle. So it, uh, you could get pressurized when it's hot and then push the bad water back into uh, the tubes going into the uh, sink. Again, this water smells pretty horrible on this side. Definitely need to be sanitized. So it's running in the cold right now. And again, once that's done, I'll get the hot going. Turn off the cold, turning on the hot. All oh, that antifreeze making foam in here. You can see that a lot. Close the hot, just relieve any pressure that's in here. Okay, run the toilet. Now you can decide how you want to uh, smell the chlorine in here. Now you can hear the pump working pretty hard. All right, so if you have a popular 190 with the indoor tank, what I found was that this, uh, for the fresh, it tells you whatever the highest tank is. So if your indoor tank was completely full, it would say full. If your indoor tank was completely empty, but your outdoor tank was full, it would still say full. So like I said, it just tells you whatever the uh, highest tank is. So now we have to flip this over so that it's on the uh, outdoor tank. Now, if you didn't have that valve, you would be done at this point, but I just I have to do it again to run the water from the uh, outdoor tank up to the pump, because it's gonna be getting old water right now. Then after this, we gotta pop outside and do the outside shower. And again, it's not because you drink out of the outside shower, it's just so that the entire water system is completely sanitized. So in this case, I'm only going through one line that needs to be sanitized, so I'm not going to run everything. I'm not sure that it says in the manual to do the full process over again. If you wanted to be extra cautious, you could certainly run the hot and the cold. I guess I'll do that just to be complete. Because like, again, I don't want to give anybody bad information. So now it's on the hot.
you can see the pump turned off right away so it tells you there's no leaks anywhere in the vehicle So we're just going to pop over to the outside shower, run that, and then we have to wait for three hours. So while that's happening, I'll put the summer tires on the vehicles. Or if you had to, if you're out in a, a lot somewhere, hopefully you have water access and also you can just clean up the vehicle while you're waiting. You can smell the chlorine rolling out of there. So I've had some very bad water come out of this in the past, so it's important that you clean it all the way out. Like I said, so now we just have to wait three hours, then we are going to drain the tanks. They could said that what you could do next is put some vinegar in the tanks, but I'm not really worried about it. So uh, after you drain the tanks, you can just fill them back up again with water, and you would put in some water conditioner. I guess I'll just pop in and show you what we use for water conditioner. You could also use bleach for that as well. So in here, I just have a bunch of uh, different chemicals. And what I mentioned in the winterizing uh, video about putting this in a bin is important because uh, you can see that these tank, the bleach especially, kind of reacts funny and expands and squirts out of the bottle. So you can see that there's a bunch of chemicals in this container just from sitting over winter. Now, if I hadn't uh, had this in a container, it would be all over the counter. So that would have been a mess. So definitely uh, keep your chemicals in a bin like that. So uh, this is uh, from Camco. Fresh uh, drinking water freshener. And uh, you'll put that in the uh, tanks before you fill them up uh, after you do the draining of the uh, bleach solution. So hopefully you found this informative and uh, thank you for watching.